Hello and welcome to The Time Shift. I'm Chris Hall and this week we're reviewing the latest episode of Doctor Who entitled Rosa. Now because this video is going to be a review of that said episode, this video is going to be spoiler heavy. So if you don't want this episode spoiled for you for whatever reason, it's best to switch this video off now to avoid any spoilers. Now without further ado, let us all dive headfirst into Rosa. Ooh, uh. <laughs> Okay, so before we get too far into this week's episode of Time Shift, I want to know what you thought, dear viewer, of this week's episode of Doctor Who. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Let me know in the comments section below on whichever website you're watching this on, and I will get back to you shortly, either directly in the comments themselves, or in a future video, maybe towards the end of next week's video, or maybe, if it's a particularly interesting question, in a video all of its own. Ooh, you'll just have to see about that one. And of course, a tiny little bit of housekeeping, yeah, there was no new intro this week. The reason being is because I'm getting a new computer this week and I've been busy again. So you'll certainly see it next week. And if not, then I'll have to do a forfeit. Suggestions down below in the comment section as to what that might be. But keep it reasonable. I mean, if it's something totally impractical or, quite frankly, ruthless, like having to sit through Kill the Moon again, I, I, I worry that I might not be able to do it. I might not be able to stomach it and... You know, Amnesty International will be on to us if you suggested me doing something like that again. But, you know what, let us just stop the waffling and talk about this week's episode of Doctor Who, which... By God, it really didn't pull any punches, did it? This is an episode about racism which doesn't shy away from it and doesn't have the Doctor just punching the racists in the face and making a speech about how we can all live in harmony. It tackles the subject matter in a very mature way which doesn't talk down to its audience and doesn't pretend as though the mere existence of Rosa Parks and the mere existence of this episode is magically going to make racism disappear overnight. It's a story which says racism was a problem in the past, it's a problem in the present and could well still be a problem in the future but it requires humanity as a whole to try and grow and evolve beyond it. It's an episode of Doctor Who which still in my mind, feels very much reminiscent of the very, very classic episodes of Doctor Who, the William Hartnell era when you'd have these edutainment-related episodes. This was a historical episode of Doctor Who keeping in the style of them. It very much had a feel to it of the Time Meddler, a story of a similar kind of feel to it, but not quite as serious or, I dare say, as emotive as this week's episode. Whilst there were some things I didn't like, particularly towards the end of the episode where you had the pop song playing towards the end of it I just didn't like that I would have been quite happy with some kind of score music playing on in the background but you know it was effective and for a lot of people I think that was a moment that just pushed them over the edge and had them blubbing the vast majority of uh, responses of people that saw this week's episode of Doctor Who have said that it's an all-time classic for them while she did have some people that were a little bit like yeah no this isn't for me and the odd account saying that it was propaganda and it was evil and it was wicked by people who have names like John Smith 10429847311. You know what, for the vast majority of people, it was a great episode for them. I thought that it was, possibly, at the very least, the best episode of this series and will probably be remembered as one of the all-time great episodes of Doctor Who. I grant you that, of course, it wasn't without its flaws. I think that our main villain was... Well, like I say, it had whiffs of it, not bad whiffs, but whiffs nonetheless, of the Time Meddler. And in the Time Meddler, we got an idea as to what the meddling monk was up to. He decided to travel back in time to help King Harold defeat Harold Hardrada by using nuclear weapons. The idea being that that would help spur humanity into an increased development of its science and its technology and its culture, so that you'd be in an era where the plays of Shakespeare would be performed live for the first time with Shakespeare directing them on television. That didn't happen because the Doctor and co saved the day. In this episode it was because he was a racist and given the motivations of the racists in this episode, the fact that his whole motivation was just the fact that he didn't like black people I think is motivation enough. I think that that character might have further motivations, may have things going on in the background that we're not aware of. I get the suggestion this is a character that we'll at least see one more time this series. He may not become a recurring villain in the long term. I don't think that he is the master or the meddling monk or the even Susan in a weird kind of way, which could be the case. I mean, she regenerates into a guy, but she ends up becoming evil. That could have been an interesting thing. Maybe that will happen, but... 
for the most part, I think he's going to be his own unique character. I really hope that he isn't the TIMELESS CHILD <laughs> because I could really do without that kind of thing and if that is him, yeah, yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, I think. I did enjoy the performances of this week's episode, which I'll discuss in the performance section. And one of the things that I did like about it was the slight meta quality that you got towards the end of this episode, where you had Graham and everyone just saying, yeah, I, I don't want to be a party to this. When it became clear to them that they would have to be on the bus to witness Rosa Parks being demanded, commanded to get out of her seat, Graham really, really, we didn't want to do it. And as far as the audience is at home is concerned, I dare say there's quite a lot of people who would rather not watch an episode like this. They wouldn't want to watch an episode of Doctor Who which is about racism. Not because they are racist themselves, but because either A, they want this sci-fi escapism that is so true to them, or alternatively, they like to pretend that racism is not a thing anymore. Or at least if it is not a thing, then it's not as bad as maybe it once was. But that's a whole other discussion for a whole other video from a whole other YouTuber. I don't talk about that kind of things, but we'll move on. But still, the meta quality of that of, no, there's no getting away from this. You have to sit there and you have to watch this. The Doctor isn't going to make a speech about racism. The Doctor isn't going to punch someone in the face and make a pop culture reference. There isn't going to be a bit where the Doctor and Rosa Parks fist bump at the end of the episode. It is just going to be, you have to witness this. You have to see it in its true form. You have to see racism in a way which many people are never going to experience in their lives. But you've got to see it. You've got to witness it. And you've got to take it so that you yourself in your waking life will not only remember this person who, for a lot of people in the UK, is pretty much unknown, sadly, due to the way the uh, educational system works over here. But for a lot of people, the impact of her defiance, as it were, has not been quite felt in the same way. And it's an educational lesson, which you look at the messages on Twitter, a lot of people were just sat there like... Yeah, I was watching this episode with my with my son or my grandson or whoever, and all the way through the episode, they were just giving me facts about the civil rights movements and about Rosa Parks. It was great. I learned some of it from my 15-year-old kid, which I thought was a wonderful little bit. It was education done right, or edutainment done right. Far and away better than even when Doctor Who was an edutainment program. During the... Twitch streams Doctor Who that they did during the summer, there was a lot of people who were just thinking and just speculating, would we ever see historical episodes of Doctor Who quite like this ever again? And lo and behold, we did. And not only did we get it, we got it in a way which felt uncomfortably relevant given what's happening in the world today. Now, I know for some people, they didn't like it. They thought that it was a little bit too preachy. They thought that it was without subtlety and without nuance and... The only thing that I can say to that is twofold. First of all, for the love of God, don't watch any episodes of Doctor Who during the late 80s. Certainly not during uh, Sylvester McCoy's room, because when it comes to tackling racism, it wasn't subtle at all. It was very in your face about it, and I think that's one of the strengths to it. And on that kind of thought process, sometimes you have to be direct. You can only have so many episodes in science fiction television shows and movies where it's a story about the red aliens and the blue aliens not getting along. Then our hero comes down onto the planet and says a big speech about how the red aliens and the blue aliens were created equally. And maybe if the red aliens and the blue aliens lived in harmony, then it would be an example to the whole cosmos. The big villain would be some kind of red or blue alien, maybe a purple alien who is an evil warmonger who's just doing it because they are evil and that or evil McBiz businessman who's doing it to exploit some kind of resource and there'd be no real link to the modern era or contemporary discussions of problems around racism it would just be racism is bad so don't do it here we see it in a historical context here we see it in contexts which make reference to things happening in the modern era and it goes so far as to say that well this isn't star trek there is no unified vision of humanity where we get beyond this it's still going to be a problem for the future but we all have to tackle it in our own way on the science fiction side of things, yes, I think that the fact that it wasn't so sci-fi heavy was a definite positive for the episode. I think that we are going to see evil greaser man again, probably in the episode where we see King Charles or whatever it, his number particularly is. We'll probably see them trying to meddle with time once more. I can almost guarantee that that'll be the case because he was sent back in time. 
and the fact that he was sent in time will just be another case of the doctor saying to Ryan that brains beat bullets because Ryan's response to try and defeat this guy wasn't so much as trying to subdue him, let alone having a debate or a discussion with him. It was just a zapping back in time. Yeah, a time traveller, a time meddler, if you will, being sent even further back in time where he could do even more big, scary and horrible things. Yeah, am I the only one that sees a problem there? But you know what, we'll see where this goes with it. We're now going to dive headfirst into the performance section because I feel a sneeze coming on and I don't want to have to re-edit this episode. And so here we are with the performance section. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't really know what to say here because, well, everybody did very, very, very well for themselves. I know that may sound a little bit condescending. It may almost sound as if I'm kind of damning them with faint praise. But the fact is that, well, last week I really wasn't feeling the TARDIS crew phenomena. I, I'm honestly still not 100% feeling it. But from performances alone this week, yeah, everybody knocked it out of the park. Everybody performed commendably well fantastically well especially the actor playing Rosa Parks they all did bloody bloody well it felt like an ensemble but genuinely so I was worried last week because it was feeling like an ensemble but that was because everybody was doing something but ne no one was really doing anything this week everybody was doing something and it felt as it was contributing to not only the overall mystery but the overall feeling of the episode itself you had some great little character moments like early on in the episode where yaz just all of a sudden clicks back into police officer mode when you got the guy harassing ryan she just kind of just takes control of the situation as though this was no this wasn't any different to any cover kind of confrontational moment she'd been in in her job in Sheffield. She was going to take control of the situation. She probably would have tried to arrest them, even though she's way, 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 way out of her jurisdiction. Ryan had this wonderful sense of... Oh, I wouldn't say naivety, because he was very well aware of the situation, but almost this slight fanboyish optimism to him when he met Rosa Parks and later Martin Luther the King. But still with this weight and gravity of him on the situation, which is that, yeah, here we are fighting to ensure that there's one moment to fight and a great to fight against racism, but I still experience it in the modern day. I still experience it with my mates going out. And, yeah, he delivered it in a way which made the, made the line feel natural. It made it feel like just another thing that character would say, rather than big, epic, actor moment which I think is what it definitely needed. And of course, Bradley Walsh is Graham. The moment towards the end of the episode, what everybody is talking about, where he says that he doesn't want to be a part of it, he really sells it. And with the character itself, he sells it even more. His ex-wife was inspired by Rosa Parks. He loved her, and now he's in a situation where he has to see a young woman that probably reminds him quite a lot of his dearly beloved, now sadly gone, wife. And now he can't do anything about it. He just has to sit there and watch it happen. There's no turning away. There is no doctor intervening with sonic sunglasses on or anything like that. Just have to sit there and let it happen for the sake of the universe and the time-space continuum itself. Everybody did fantastically well. I have nothing else to say about it. Everybody really went out and really sold the performances. And particularly the American characters in the story. Doctor Who has never had a good history when it has come to American characters in Doctor Who. Their accents at times feel laboured and false, but for me it really landed. It really felt fantastic. I really should be saying a lot more to really gear up and give thumbs up to everybody in this episode, but all I can say about them is that they were fantastic. They truly, truly were. And to give kudos and say, this person is the performance of the episode, I think really undersells the greatness that everybody else did. If you are going to do that, yeah. The person playing Rosa Parks, whose name I, for whatever reason, haven't written down on my notepad, they were by far and away probably the best performance in the episode itself. But given how well everyone else was doing, it truly says something 
we need episodes of Doctor Who like this, not only from an educational standpoint, not even from a socio-political standpoint, but sheer entertainment value. And when I say entertainment, I don't mean the X Factor, bang, whiz, pop, woo, smiley face, let's have a good time. But in the, let's all have a sit down and actually confront something in our lives, and at the end of it we feel empowered enough to want to try and change the world in which we live in. I think we need more of that in television as a whole. But you know what, we'll probably talk about that in more detail in the overview. And so here we are with the overview. Yeah, I love this week's episode of Doctor Who. I was a little bit worried, it has to be said, about the direction that Doctor Who was taking after last week. Last week just felt like any other generic Russell T. Davis era episode of Doctor Who. And yet, this week we have this. An episode which I and many people were worried would be cringy, as the kids these days say. For me, it wasn't. It really knocked it out of the park, and it wasn't pulling any punches, and for that it has to be commended for. It tackled the bull by the horns as best as it could in this particular time slot, and it really ran with it. A lot of people are going to be seeing this for the first time, learning about Rosa Parks for the first time, learning about her importance to history, learning about the civil rights movement. And given the things that have been happening in the news just earlier that day, it feels very, very uncomfortably real. Still part of us and still part of the world in which we live in. It is an episode of Doctor Who where the scariest and most alien place that the Doctor has ever gone to, certainly in modern Doctor Who, is 1950s America. Not that far long ago. Yeah, this is probably going to be one of the all-time greats of Doctor Who. And because it is so great, there's very little that you can say about it, even now. It's a fantastic episode, and I am glad that it put aside a lot of the science fiction bullshit that we otherwise would have got to it. Our villain was just a racist, and that's all he needed to be. It was irrational, much like the actions of the people in that particular town in which they were in. It all made sense, it all interwoven, it all locked together perfectly. And there was no references to the Timeless Child or to the Stenser or to any greater story arc happening in this series. It was a perfect standalone story of Doctor Who, the kinds of which were... Yeah, as some people have suggested, you probably could show this to kids at school to help them learn a little bit about the civil rights movement. I mean, a lot of places, a lot of schools, <laughs> I'll rely a little bit too much on what they have on video, but you know what, that's a debate and a discussion for a different time. I love this week's episode of Doctor Who, I truly did. I'm interested to see what else we have with this particular series going forward. Next week, we have an episode which feels more like traditional Doctor Who, so anybody who was put off by the fact that we were dealing with such a difficult subject matter can rest easy in the fact that next week we're having some a lot softer a lot more friendly and a lot more tolerable we're gonna be having an adventure with giant fucking spiders oh good grief i'm glad that i'm not really arachnophobic anymore because otherwise i wouldn't be able to watch the episode <laughs> Uh, but we'll see about it. I, I'm interested to see where they go with it. I'm interested to see what kind of effects that they're going to have with it. There is a worry for me that a lot of people are going to be seeing Doctor Who for the first time after this episode and think to themselves, my God, is Doctor Who always like this? And then all the Doctor Who fans, the long-term Doctor Who fans, just being there like, well, sometimes, sometimes the quality is really, really, really great like this. But, you know, next week it's going to be with giant spiders. And I really don't think that they're going to be allegorical for anything. I just think they're going to be giant fucking spiders and nothing else. But we'll soon see about that. I'm sure that it next week will be business as usual for anyone who just wants Daleks and Cybermen and monsters lurking behind the sofa or whatever. But what about you, dear viewer? Did you love this week's episode of Doctor Who? Did you hate it? Let me know in the comment section in whichever website you're watching this on. Be sure to like, share and subscribe and click your bell if you want to keep up to date with upcoming videos that happen on this channel. Be sure to recommend us to your friends. Be sure to comment and do all the youtuber stuff. I know I'm waffling at the moment because I don't want to leave. I want to stay. I want to talk about this episode and how great it is so more. But reality is I don't want to be repeating myself because it truly is that good. It's an episode which is uncomfortably topical given the events of the past few days and past few years and, well, just about the past few anything at the moment. 
It's an episode of Doctor Who which we remembered as one of the all-time greats. It's an episode of Doctor Who which I think subtly is setting up future inventions and adventures and future endeavours. But we'll soon see about that. For the time being at least, I have been Chris Hall and I thank you for watching this episode of The Time Shift. See you next week everybody. Bye!